Reimagining Success, Episode 32. You're listening to Reimagining Success, the podcast where we help you reimagine your future, designing a life and career beyond the nine to five that allows you the freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment that you've been dreaming of. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg. Now, let's get started on those dreams. Hello, hello there and welcome back. This week in particular, as we make a bit of a shift in what we're talking about, of course, still on the same topic as reimagining success as ever. However, we're going to be going back to our roots, I guess, to some extent. So let me explain. Now, we've spent the last few months looking at the freedom and the flexibility that comes with running your own business. So we looked at why running your own business is the best way to get that freedom and flexibility to how to set the business up for success. And then in recent weeks zooming in on how this can be especially valuable when you're running that business alongside having a young family and we looked at parental leave and so on so of course if you've missed those episodes or if you've just discovered the reimagining success podcast i'd love for you to go back and listen to those episodes and but if not you'll know that we've in a way come to a key question i think and perhaps this is something that you're asking yourself It's, should you quit your corporate job to set up your own business? So I know some of you already have your businesses, so bear with me. Um, However, those of you who are still in a corporate job, um, and perhaps we can use the phrase corporate job loosely, um, but those of you who are still in that job, perhaps you are now asking yourself whether you should quit that job. Now, of course, there is so much hype now, especially on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, probably podcasts as well, to be honest, about launching that six-figure business. And no, probably forget, the six-figure business, it's all about six-figure months, right? So you can create those six-figure months while working fewer hours, outsourcing most of the hard work so you can remove yourself entirely from the business and then maybe also traveling the world and sipping that piña colada on the beach as you check in now and then on your laptop. Now, I'm always really reluctant to be part of that propaganda because it really is propaganda. And for a long time, I tiptoed around the topic of quitting because for me, it's really not as simple as telling all of you to quit your job. And in fact, I don't want to be telling you to do anything. Um, And I feel much more passionate, as you can imagine, about my broader message of reimagining success, which of course is the theme and the name of the podcast. And this is more around questioning the conventional definitions of what you should be aiming for, should, within quotation marks, getting clear on what's really truly important and meaningful to you, which let's let's face it, may well include quitting your corporate job as you build your own business that you're really passionate about, but doesn't necessarily and then working towards that new definition that you've created for yourself. Again, if you're new to the podcast, do head on back to episode zero, one, two, and so on, where I'm really looking at why this idea of reimagining success, what's wrong with that conventional definition that we have, and how you can go about beginning to reimagining, reimagine success for yourself. But of course, in terms of quitting your job, I am a little biased, because in September 2013, I walked out of my office and into the unknown. I resigned from my job, which was the first real job after my studies with no concrete plans if I'm completely honest in fact no plans really at all as to what I would be doing next and it had started in fact with a request to my boss to take a three-month sabbatical and to my surprise she, she said yes there wasn't really an obvious next step for me in terms of assignments within the company so off I went to South America to travel from Quito, Ecuador, through eight countries to Buenos Aires, Argentina. And during that time, during those three months, I literally devoured every book on personal development and careers and consulting and businesses and and all those topics, all the books I could find on Kindle. I chatted to people I met in hostels. I listened to their very different stories about what they were doing and why. And I did a whole lot of soul searching. If I had known about podcasts, I probably would have listened to podcasts podcast then as well. And then halfway through that trip, I called up HR and I officially gave in my resignation. Now, looking back on that decision, it is the scariest decision I ever made. I can't believe I actually made it. It's really not very much like me. I'm always that good girl who did what I was told. Um, So the most courageous decision I'd argue that I've ever made, but also the best decision I've ever made. And honestly, I can only rave about the amazing experiences I've had and the people I've met, the work I'm doing, the life I'm living taking uh, since taking that leap back in 2013. And no, it's not those six-figure months on the beach with my pina colada, although I do like 
like pina coladas. I also like a good pisco sour. In fact, that's probably one of my favorite cocktails these days. Um, but certainly was the best decision I ever made. And, you know, everything in moderation, but um, it, it is a fantastic, has been a fantastic experience for me. And it's something I wish for everyone as well, if that's something that you would like. However, it's not just my personal experience that's leading me to push this message. I actually wrote an article a while back. It was originally something I wrote, I think, six months after I quit and then a year again. A year later, I updated it and I think I updated it again in 2017. It's picked up by publications like Business Insider, Inc., Quartz, and shared by Ariana Huffington on LinkedIn, I, I believe. Um, after which I received a deluge, deluge of um, messages from people with whom my experience resonated. And on top of that, I've been working with clients, in fact, since training and certifying as a coach in 2015. And I hear the same frustrations and desires again and again. Um, in fact, I've collected the stories of 50 individuals together in my book, Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5, Stories from People Who've Done It and How You Can Too. So you don't even have to take my word for it. It's not just me. You can actually hear what all these 50 people have to say about their own experiences of quitting their jobs to do something different. So more and more people are waking up to the fact that the nine to five is not the best way to work anymore. And more and more people want to do something about it. So first of all, why this obsession with the nine to five? Well, the idea of working nine to five, it didn't come from Dolly Parton, although I've got that song stuck in my head now. Um, it emerged at the turn of the previous century, so the early 1900s. It was a revolutionary idea for its time. It involved cutting back on excessive hours at a time when people were actually working 16 hour days or 100 hours a week in factories in, you know, around the 1890s. So, you know, with 16 hour days, the nine to five doesn't sound so bad, does it? Um, but what has happened since then? Well, at least half of managers apparently work more than those 40 hours a week. That probably doesn't surprise you if you are one of those managers. Four in 10, so 40% say that their hours have increased in the last few years. So they're not decreasing. Of course, there are many more working mums as well, many more families with two working parents. Technology has made it possible to work anytime, any place. And there are two sides to that. So on the one hand, it means that you're expected to be always on. You're working late into the evenings, weekends, holidays. On the other hand, it means that you don't need to be in the office all the time and you can work more flexible hours. Hooray, flexibility, one of my favourite things. Now, surveys have found that four out of five office workers check their work email after leaving the office. I'm surprised it's not more. And one in three log on before even getting out of bed. While over 50% of commuters, ugh, the commute, are sending work emails en route to and from the office. So it really is not the nine to five, even though that's sort of an easy way to label it. Now, bizarrely, this is, isn't actually what we thought would happen. So John um, Keynes thought that well, in 1930, he predicted that technology would actually allow us to cut our working week down to just 15 hours, he said, as our material needs were satisfied, satisfied. So we wouldn't have to work those 40 hours, 100 hours, whatever it was. And Tim Ferriss of the four-hour work week fame, of course, um, would have us just work four hours a week. So, you know, 15 hours, four hours, all sounds pretty good. So why on earth, if all these experts are talking about these um, shorter weeks, why are we working so hard? Well, for one thing, there are, of course, a lot of good things that come with a corporate job. So I never want to ignore all those things and um, be too black and white in terms of, you know, um, supporting the idea of, of quitting that job. Because, of course, you get promotions, salary increases, you have the prestige of working for a big name brand, not to mention the office parties and socialising with colleagues. And I say that a little bit tongue in cheek, but that's really an important part of work. And, you know, having that team around you is a massive benefit of working in a corporation. You have senior managers and directors to learn from access to the top agencies and um, you know fantastic um, benefits as well that come with that job another reason there is I think we've actually been socialized to this way of life so it's become perfectly normal and expected that you see on Facebook every Monday everyone post oh I hate Mondays and then you know every Friday it's TGIF so you're living for the weekends you're leaving for your holidays and you know, work is work and it's not meant to be fun is the idea that we seem to be um, assuming, I guess. Um, but of course, there are also many who have no choice but to work long hours for little pay. So we're not talking about those people. We're talking about a privileged few and we are the privileged few who do have a choice. 
So, okay, what's wrong with a nine to five? Well, let's start from the perspective of the corporation or even of the overall economy. Working long hours in an office in no way guarantees productivity. So a lot of time is wasted at work with all the distractions that happen in an office environment. We each as individuals have different natural rhythms. So we might be early birds, night owls, and our rhythm might not necessarily and probably won't match the strict office hours that are company has and in fact our brains can't even focus for more than a few hours anyway and um, some research says you know 20 minutes at a time and in fact the average employee apparently works productively for just two hours and 53 minutes in an eight hour day so you know even those nine to five 40 hour work weeks 100 they're a bit of a myth because apparently we're only working less than three hours productively so despite all those stats you know people are working longer hours and never really taking a proper break Successful corporate managers and directors have a lot of money, but no time to spend it. And they'll, of course, buy luxury holidays, snazzy cars, big houses with big mortgages to make themselves feel better. And of course, those same purchases then lock them into this way of life and keep them in the corporate nine to five so that they can afford the lifestyle that they're so used to by now. And this is all probably quite subconscious. It's not something we're thinking about doing, but it's certainly something that I think we can, a lot of us can um, resonate with. So the health risks of working those longer hours have been widely reported. You know, almost 60% of adults are drinking alcohol to cope with the stresses of everyday life, while 38% drink to forget their problems. In the UK, half a million people now suffer from work-related stress. And burnout has become, um, I saw a quote um, in an article, a sinister and insidious epidemic. And although, of course, the idea of burnout is pretty subjective as a, as a label, as a diagnosis, I suppose, it usually manifests as exhaustion, irritability, lack of interest, lack of empathy, poor performance at work, family issues, relationship problems at home, and so on. Medication, vacation, these are things that only provide temporary relief. At the other end of the spectrum, there are those lost souls wandering the corridors, people who are okay, they're fine. So they haven't burnt out. They're not over-challenged. In fact, they're under-challenged. They're spending, you know, 10 to 15 years climbing the corporate ladder. They reach the top and then suddenly they ask, hang on a second, now what? And they're surprised and disappointed to find that it doesn't really bring any meaningful reward. And if anything, it's simply going to mean working harder for the next step if there isn't even is a next step that they want to pursue. But no one ever says, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. Um, and instead, in fact, I've talked about this before, Bronnie Ware's top five regrets the dying. She worked in um, palliative care. She was a nurse working with the, um, with I think, the elderly who, who were nearing the end of their lives. And she collected their dying regrets. So these are regrets that we can learn from rather than wait until we're on our deathbeds as well. And those included, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish that I had let myself be happier. And in the number one spot, my personal favourite, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Okay, so if you, this is all resonating, you agree, you're completely um, you know, persuaded by all of this, you don't even need me to persuade you. And I, again, I don't want to persuade you really, that's not the point. So if you do want to leave, then what is the alternative? Because often the so-called corporate nine to five is all we know, if that's you know, like me, the only thing you've known after school, after university. So for me, the corporate nine to five means working in a private corporation and the corporation's primary motivation is profit and you're probably just a small part of a big machine. You're working in an office kind of environment, you're reporting to a senior manager, your boss, you're working standard hours, generally Monday to Friday, the so-called nine to five, although of course it never is that, and then receiving a regular monthly salary and lots of other benefits like insurance and pension and so on. So with those criteria in mind, alternatives to that could include working in a different type of company or organisation, maybe not for profit, um, working at home or in a different environment, outdoors maybe, travelling, I don't know, working for yourself or for a number of different clients, so, you know, running your own business, working as a freelancer perhaps with many different clients, working more flexible hours, of course, and then no longer receiving that regular salary and benefits. And as you probably know by now, if you know me at all, then you'll know that I believe the best alternative is to set up your very own business. And that includes freelancing, consulting, coaching, all these different constellations. Now, of course, there is no one alternative. There's definitely no single schedule or setup that works for everyone. But that is the whole point, because you can create your own schedule based on your own definition of success, your core personal values and your individual situation. 
Now, having said that, most of us, and no, it's not just those millennial snowflakes, and in fact, I think I'm a millennial snowflake, according to the official definition. Um, It's not just millennials who want flexibility. We all want to be able to manage work alongside our family priorities and hobbies, and we want to feel like we're doing something meaningful that's making a difference in the world. So running your own business allows you to do all of those things and more. And the good news is that there are so many more opportunities than ever before to work flexibly and remotely. There are more tools and resources available than ever before to allow you to start and grow a business without having to have a massive investment. So no, you don't need to go to a VC firm to pitch your idea necessarily when you're just starting out. And there is more information and support available than ever before too. So there are online courses, business coaches, programs and so on to guide you through the process, podcasts for that matter. So more to the point, I think the reasons that a lot of people will cite at least for staying in their corporate nine to five, perceived job security in a large company, a comfortable retirement and generous pension and so on, they don't actually apply anymore. And, you know, there's no such thing as a job or even a career for life. And even the most established companies have had to let people go. So the way in which our parents and grandparents' generations structured their lives and careers, working for one company, or at least, you know, in one industry, one type of role for their whole life, and then uh, having the pension, that just isn't going to work anymore. It's not financially, professionally viable. Okay, so what is next, just to wrap up? If all this resonates with you and you find the idea of all this freedom and flexibility that I'm always talking about alluring, then you may well have been listening up to this point and thinking, yeah, 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 this sounds great, but... Yes, it sounds amazing. And yes, I'd love to run my own business, but... I can't afford to just quit and I wouldn't have time to launch a business alongside my full-time job. I'm not an entrepreneurial person... I don't know what business to start. I don't even know where to begin. And what if I mess up and ruin my career prospects forever? Not to mention I don't have enough to pay the rent or take care of my family and so on. Well, you are in luck because this is exactly what we're going to be exploring in the next few weeks. These buts, these reasons, or dare I say it, excuses why you think all this can't apply to you. Um, You know, we're going to look at the thorny question of money because, yes, it is an important piece, both from a mindset perspective and really concretely financially how you're going to manage. And of course, time is the other block. So money and time, how you can find or rather make the time to start that side hustle. How you can overcome your insecurities around being good enough. You don't need to be entrepreneurial. Is there even such a thing as entrepreneurial? how you can work out what it is you want to do and then how you can get started and much much more so we're going to be exploring all these ideas in the next few weeks now quitting your corporate job let's be honest is no magical solution to your woes and starting your own business is going to be hard work so let's put that out there not to mention that actually working out what it is that you really want to do in the first place is the hardest part it's my favorite part it's what I love helping people do get those foundations in place reimagining success defining those goals working out your criteria but it is the hardest part it's actually sort of the groundwork that needs to be put in place before you even get to what's the business idea and the pitch and the brand and so on however this one decision to quit your job has the potential to for example put you on a steeper learning curve and I'm a massive fan of lifelong learning getting out of your comfort zone to reignite your passion for your work and you may have heard me talk about your icky guy before really finding work that leverages your skills what you're good at what you love doing that makes a difference in the world and that you can actually monetize that gives you the money you need and ultimately bring you everything you've ever truly wanted because as the quote goes everything you've ever wanted is one step outside your comfort zone so doesn't all this sound like it's worth at least a shot well I certainly think so and again this is my experience those are my clients the people I've interviewed in my book all the people around the world who've come to me after I wrote that article as well so with that wrapping up for today but as I said this is really kicking off again a content series a theme over the next few weeks and probably months coming back to the core of leaving your corporate nine to five which really is where I started in my coaching experience and of course where I started sort of my personal development and career development as well so I hope you found this interesting maybe a bit provocative and I hope so if so then as ever you can get in touch at podcast at one step outside.com podcast at one step outside.com with your comments questions experiences anecdotes whatever you want to share Um, and I look forward to hopefully you joining me in the coming weeks and sharing your feedback 
every week and hearing more about what you think, maybe building your confidence if this is something you're considering and certainly enjoying the, um, again, slightly provocative perhaps discussion on the pros and cons, the fears you need to overcome, the concrete steps you can take and so on. And of course, the crux of it all, working out what it is you actually want to do so that it really becomes a meaningful definition of success that you're working towards. So thanks so much for listening. A slightly longer episode today, but an important topic and hopefully exciting to kick this off now in the coming weeks. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Reimagining Success with Anna Lundberg. If you're looking for support and encouragement as you begin to reimagine success in your life, then come on over and join us in the One Step Outside Facebook group. You'll find like-minded people who will cheer you on, as well as free training sessions and lots more. To join, visit onestepoutside.com forward slash community or just search for One Step Outside on Facebook. I'll see you over there.